Multi-generational housing, is that something you've been thinking about? My name is Tracy Clifton. I have a four-generation multi-generational home, and I'm here to give you five pros and five cons about multi-generational living. So we're gonna start with the pros. Number one, it saves money, plain and simple. You take multiple houses, you put them together, and it's cheaper all the way around for everyone. You can afford a much bigger house because typically you have one of the families, the older, the parents, their house may be paid for because they've lived in it for 30 years. In our instance, in my family's case, what we did was we bought my parents' home, the, my childhood home, and we have a four generational home for the price of a regular average family home. So number two, caring for older generations. It's just easier when they're in your house, honestly. You don't get a phone call from some entity. You're the one making the phone call or you're there when the ambulance arrives. So it's just easier when you live in a multi-generational home. Number three, caring for younger generations. Lots of times right now, moms and dads have to work both work full-time outside of the home. Having a multi-generational home means that when your kids get off the bus or walk home from school, they rarely, if ever, walk into an empty home. And you also have a right there backup for sports or activities that your kids need to go to if you're stuck at work. Number four, holidays are easy when everyone's together. Number five, grandparents get to be involved in rearing. My father will tell you that when his mother lived here, my Mima, she lived well into her 90s and she received my daughter after school every day. And it gave her a purpose. And he's convinced that it gave her something to live for, a job. She always had something to do. Now, this is twofold. And number five on the pro list is also number one on the con list. Grandparents get to be involved in the rearing. At my house, you're not allowed to eat outside of the kitchen. But at grandma's house, you're allowed to eat ice cream anywhere you want. And so those are boundaries that you just have to work out together. Number two, overloaded systems. There's a generation that uses the toilets a lot more than another generation. So if you have a septic system or a, an old pipe system, you want to make sure that you have those upgraded, updated, and prepared for multiple family members and multiple people living in a house using those systems. Now also HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Um, being in my late 40s, I keep my house at 68 degrees. My grandmother, being in her late 80s, likes to keep it 80 degrees in her room. So those are things that you just need to make sure you pick the right kinds of systems so that each zones can be properly moderated. If it's a same house situation, sometimes it's a multi-house on the same property. So just think about that. Number three, the vehicular fleet. If you have multiple drivers, and we do, we have parent drivers, my husband and I drive, our kids drive, that's a lot of cars that we have to circle around back and forth, in and out. Our solution to that was a circle drive with extra parking in order to accommodate keeping the cars off the street. Now, number four, it's a little bit personal. People gonna be in your business. For instance, I'm sitting here on my patio. Our house is a horseshoe. So my parents' sliding glass doors can be open or shut over to my left. My patio doors can be open or shut. So if you're gonna be fighting with your husband, people gonna hear it. And again, just another one of those boundaries that you have to decide how you're gonna work it out. Number five, lifestyle. 
styles, themes. My husband thinks that firefighter is a lot is a style. I think that firefighter is a theme, and themes are only for man caves and children's bedrooms. My father, however, agrees with my husband, and I like a farmhouse style, and my father likes yard art. So as I sit here on my patio, I have chicken water features on my patio, also on my mailbox, my very expensive mailbox and my mother purchases the highest quality grade carpet on the planet and it's purple and her countertops are red and my house which I just asked for a cohesive color palette throughout is gray and white so again, those are just some of the things that you gotta decide up front about how you're gonna blend these things together. Now, I have gray and white, my mother has purple and red, and it's gonna be just fine. But there was a fight about it before we got to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tracy Clifton with All City Real Estate, helping to teach you about multi-generational housing. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about the different kinds of multi-generational homes. So subscribe below so that you can get this information too.